Well, good morning, Abby Vine and friends. You guys, this is so exciting. We are so blessed to see so many people come in, and it's been our tradition the last couple of months to just get started right at 1030, and we know today that just means a kind of a chaos, but nevertheless, we just want to invite the Lord into our hearts, recognizing that he's here already, but we want to prepare our hearts for him. It's going to be a day of lots of memories, going to be lots of worship, going to be lots of time for connection at the end of it. Uh, But in the midst of all that, if you feel like it's not too socially inappropriate to stop hugging the people next to you and uh, talking to them, we're just going to take a moment to kind of ready our hearts for the Lord. Because whatever AVC has been doing for the last 30 years, we have been wanting to make space for the Lord in our hearts, in our families, in Abbotsford, in the lower mainland, and the world. And so that's what this is all about. And so while we want to spend time connecting and relating to each other, because that's how we express loving others, we want to start with expressing loving God. And that's what the first part of this morning is all about. So if you're comfortable with it, oh, by the way, my name's Michael Ben. My wife, Jody, and I are pastors here. If you're comfortable with it, just open your hands up like this. If you've been around the vineyard, you'll recognize a vineyard trademark. Open your hand up. We don't own this, but we do this. Open your hands up like this, as if you're about to receive a gift, because so many of us have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We'll just say, Father, Holy Spirit, Son, three in one, thank you that you are here. Thank you that not only are you here, but so many others are here today, together, to gather in the name, not of Abbotsford Vineyard, so much as in your holy name. And you said if just two or three are gathered in your name, you are here as well. And so we are so thankful for your holy presence, and we want to remove all blockages that are within us, and we want to move aside everything that gets in the way, everything that so easily entangles, as the Apostle Paul said, and we want to prepare space for the Holy One, the Divine One, the essence of all that is love, and all that is good, and all that is holy. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. It's so awesome to see so many familiar faces. Welcome home party. Welcome to our home party. (laughs) It's like family has been just in, in different parts of the world and they come for a big family dinner. Thanks for coming and helping this day. Be extra special with your presence here. The Lord is faithful. That's the only reason why we're here today. one so unchanging ageless one you're my rock of peace Lord of all I depend
in scripture that is just so prevalent is thankfulness. God commands us to be thankful, to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to him in Psalm 50. Psalm 57, we are told to make a joyful noise with thanksgiving. In Philippians, we're told to not worry about anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, continue to make our requests known to God. And I think thankfulness is just a theme that's been running through my head these last few weeks as we think about today. Thankful for this church, the fact that it still exists. Thankful for all of you. Thankful for all the, the pastors, the worship leaders, the congregation, the people who have put into this church over the years. So thankfulness is just a theme. It's absolutely wonderful. And I just want to thank you, Kieran. I just want to thank you, Tom, for being here. You can start playing. It's fine. <laughs> but um, I think this my vocal mic is really hot, so maybe turn it down a little bit. Um, but he's one of our first worship leaders in Evans Vineyard. One, one of the first ones. So yeah, you can still hear him. Show me favor. You have shown me. 
God. That's why you see me fishing around here. Let's get this all sorted. Thanks. That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> Pause. I just want to say, if you own a dark blue Sienna, good for you. That is a great vehicle, and if you're interested in me flipping it for you, just talk to me later. But in the meantime, we'd love it if you could move it. It's, we have these wonderful landlords that have given us this space for a good deal, and they're giving us the gym for free today in celebration of our 30th. But it is blocking their place of worship, and so if you could move it, that would be great. And thank you for that little moment to do that.
And I'm so thrilled to have Kevin here, who spent 10 years, 10 years as worship pastor, and we're so grateful for that time, even though I wasn't there, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed it. But I, I heard about all the Love Abbotsford stuff, and, and that was amazing, you know, and, and it affected everywhere around here, all of that stuff. And, um, and we participated in some of the Love Abbotsford stuff from, from Langley. Well, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, lead away.
stations in three different spots. Uh, you look to your right and left and behind you. We have these emblems that have rested at the heart of the Christian story for, well, actually from before, <laughs> before time. But certainly these last couple thousand years and um, in all our comings and goings. And we were praying earlier, it's just beauty of the journey of faith it's not about who stayed in the church or who left the church or who's in or who's out it's about Jesus and his faithfulness and us just stumbling along and following him and we're still this little community just carrying that out and many of you across this room in all sorts of different phases and spaces of life but we center ourselves on Jesus and his finished work and so we just want to start moving towards these tables and in all the insanity of life he just says don't forget about me remember me when it's pain and sorrow just just don't forget when the week's gone all crazy and you're swamped or 
confused or in the height of some great season of what feels like just favor and blessing, he says, don't forgive me. Remember me. This is what love looks like. Shed body or shed blood, a broken body. This is what love looks like. Not afraid of the broken place, not a place of afraid of the place of bleeding. <laughs> this is our hope. This is the good news. That he has come, he's with us, he never leaves, never forsakes. So if you're comfortable with this, of course, introversion is a is a beautiful thing which we sometimes we don't know how to celebrate very much. So you just want to take it by yourself, that's fine. But I encourage you to maybe grab someone you haven't seen for a long time or grab your family or some friends and just move to these stations. There's people there that will just serve the elements or I, th I think that's how it's happening. So let's just begin to move and center ourselves on Jesus. Lord, 30 years in, we're not going to forget you. Remember me, he said. Remember my blood that holds you together. It is the glue of community. Remember my broken body. I'm broken. You can be broken. Take and eat and celebrate the presence of Jesus in the midst of his church, in the midst of this world. His story is woven through every story in this room and it continues to be the story of the Abbotsford Vineyard. Lord, we celebrate you. Celebrate you, Jesus, 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 Jesus.
Holy Spirit, we are so thankful for you and for your eternal participation in this gathering as, as we meet and talk to each other and love on each other. Lord, we thank you so much for you, and we're looking forward to so much together. Um, right now, folks, we're just going to watch some greetings from afar, some people who are in this room and some who are not able to make it. Happy 30th anniversary, Abbotsford Vineyard. Wishing you much love. Hello, Abbotsford Vineyard. It's Leslie Canada here. I was on staff uh, starting 2014 to about 2018. And I want to say to you all, happy anniversary. Greetings, Abbotsford Vineyard. It's so great to be a part of your 30th anniversary celebration. So hard to believe 30 years have passed. We have so many beautiful memories from Abbotsford Vineyard. We were just at a conference that was being taught by Vineyard Mali and Vineyard Ivory Coast. So thank you for everything that you're doing. We wish you another 30 years and we bless you richly in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are impacting the world. Thank you. We have many fond memories of the vineyard. We remember Terry and Ruth, the pastors at the time. We also remember being part of the Sunday school team and getting to know many of the families in the church and having the privilege of teaching many children uh, who, just to date us, um, are probably in their 30s right now. Uh, so it's at least 30 years ago. <laughs> we remember being part of a, a home group with Dave and Val working team. And we had the privilege of together uh, with the home group of blessing a special family. This was a highlight for us. And the church was also involved with this. And it was a tremendous blessing. The other one, uh, which is I love Abbotsford. Abbotsford. We really enjoyed that. Um, we often, with our home group, was outside of um, Value Village and we were handing out hot dogs and free pop and it was interesting to see that people just really could not understand why we were giving out something for free. And, and a little bit suspicious, but actually very happy once we explained that we, we were there just to show God's love. A lot of these friendships we have kept uh, throughout the years and um, they've been enduring and supportive supportive and really these vineyard friends have been lifelong friends so it's made the vineyard made an indelible uh, impression on both of us and our family too god bless you all and happy 30th anniversary we had the privilege of being the very first pastors of the abbotsford vineyard and uh, we were inexperienced but we were surrounded <laughs> by an amazing uh, worship team you know, there was a lot of excitement in those early days about the Abbotsford Vineyard. And it would be a special church, a church where worship would be central and where um, people would really care about uh, one another. And the Holy Spirit uh, would be welcomed. Um, it'd also be a church where um, there'd always be room for one more in God's family. And, and we were taught this in a dramatic way when we went to Russia to adopt two girls. And we told the Russians, they're asking why we came. We said, because there's always room for one more in God's family. And how excited we were when Stephen Nicolum King, our first uh, new believers, came to, uh, came to faith in Christ. Also, you know, the, the church was about um, reaching out uh, to others. And so we did that through uh, small acts of kindness done with, with great love. And I remember one day when a woman came to church and said, I'm, I'm here today at church because yesterday Jesus gave me a, a Coke. And also we wanted to, uh, one of the things that really uh, affected us was the, the uh, disunity in the bigger body of Christ. So we wanted to make a difference in that. And so often we would invite couples to come and share about uh, their church. And we pray over them and sing David Roos's song, Break Dividing Walls. And, and the, the banners would crack even over the uh, surprised uh, guests' heads. So we've had a great run and we're, we're very uh, thankful. Yes. And may the Lord continue to bless you and make mm -hmm. you a blessing mm -hmm. to the community around you as you follow where he leads you. Mm -hmm. God bless. Good morning, Abbotsford Vineyard. Ruth and Terry here. We are delighted to share with you your 30th anniversary. 
We have some really happy memories. Uh, too many to put in one minute, but some highlights would be Love Your City, uh, Table Sunday was such a joy to be a part of, and just all the creative arts and different movies and dances and all that fun stuff. So thank you for being a part of our lives. From starting with Above the Underground, moving to Clarebrook and, Clarebrook and Downs, MEI, what a time. We love you and bless you guys for your hard work in the city. Much love. Happy anniversary. Hey, Abbotsford Vineyard, happy 30th birthday. Boy, Lisa and I have been remembering all the different things that have happened at the Abbotsford Vineyard, all the amazing things that we've been able to do together, from our local outreach stuff to our overseas stuff to our amazing uh, Christmas and Easter services and our Sunday school. And we were, feel so privileged to be a part of that, a part of you, a part of what God was doing uh, in our church. And uh, we are so uh, excited for what God has in store for the Abbotsford Vineyard uh, in the future and just wishing you all the best and cheering you on and praying for you and just absolutely deeply love you from our hearts. God bless. You can just fade that one out there. Well, welcome here, everybody. That's so great. And of course, that's just the beginning of greetings. Greetings will keep on happening. We just want to kind of acknowledge, my goodness, there's a lot of you. This is so good. And we want to acknowledge some people who are here that I particularly think you don't want to, don't want to miss. Um, so, um, but before that, we're going to talk about kids. Kids, Kayla, Hawk, and Tahila. Can you put up your hands? Okay, so if there's any other kids in the building, nursery is going to be parent run today, but kids are going to go with Kayla and Tahila. So let's have all the kids stand on the chair, on the pews. On the pews. Let's everybody. do this. Yes. Stand <laughs> and on the if pews. you're comfortable, let's reach our hands to this. <laughs> is these are our kids. Woo! You don't, you don't have to, but it's good that you're up. This is very cool. And Lord, we thank you for these kids. We just say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And Lord, this is our future. We are so thankful. This is our present. Bless them, fill them, and we pray that they would be followers of Jesus, that you would mark them in this time for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you are a kid, follow the kids. Kids, if you felt that was weird, that's okay. We just, we're just having a little fun. You never have to do anything we say. You just have to listen to your leaders. And we're not those people right now. We just want to kind of acknowledge some people who, hey, there may be a regional oversight, and you may or may not know they may have formally been in regional oversight, and they're here. Um, and uh, so we're going to start with David Roos, our national director, who is on the keys. Woo! Yeah. Uh, who has come all the way from uh, from Kelowna and also yeah he's done a bunch of things go ahead Joan and so we met David I don't know where David is right now but David are you is. here he's, th there he's here is. there yeah. he is Thank so we you, met David. David and Anita in 95 when they planted Winnipeg Center Vineyard and Mike and I feel deeply embedded to David and Anita for their leadership for their influence for their friendship and their love in our lives and we feel like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and so we just Thank you, guys, for who you are and the impact you've made internationally, nationally, and locally, and in our lives personally. We also have the former national director, Gary Best, is in the house somewhere. I saw you. I know you're here. He's going to come and talk in just a minute. There yeah. we go. Um, and uh, yeah, he's the former national director, and he'll talk uh, very soon. Yeah, so feel free to come on up. Um, yeah, go ahead. And Kate Benton. We're just going to ask you folks, as we say your name, to stand. Kate, can you stand as well? Woo! Yeah, yeah like a kid on the Kate, few. Yeah. Okay, so Kate Learning is from the children. one of our regional leaders, and she is, she is our regional leader. She's on the national team. And and just personally, we have been so welcomed by Kate. I still remember two years ago how fondly and, and warmly she embraced us and how supportive she's been in our transition here. So thank you, Kate. And we just love your leadership. So thankful for you. Yeah. And Mike Fornwald is here, our former youth and young adults pastor. I believe that may have been your title. 
Uh, presently lead pastor at Penticton Vineyard, and he is going to be baptizing someone today, his former member of his youth group, which we're super pumped about. We'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. And Mike is also on the regional team. Yes, he is. Yes. Oh, and Neil, Neil Black. Neil Black, are you here? Neil, if you can stand. Okay, awesome. Neil Black is on the National Council, and he's on the national team, and he's the overseer of leadership development and transitions. And I can say, personally, he's the amazing coach. After I took a small test, well, a long test, he told me more about myself than I already knew, so he's definitely worth <laughs> your while. And we have, I think, Barry and Nancy Cordell. I don't know if they made it. Did they make here? it? Did they make it? Are they here? Oh. There they are at the back. Woo. I couldn't find the hat. He told me to look for the hat. Pastors at uh, Campbell River and former regional leaders. We're so blessed to have so many of you here today. And particularly, they've come quite a long way. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm just going to say, Randy and Allison Cockrell, Randy's on the national team. He's usually here with us, but they are visiting their family in Saskatchewan, and we're just so thankful for them. And Jay and Kathy Dick. I met for the first time last night, all the way from a 100-mile house. Started a home group in 1992, led this church from 1993 to 1996. And I was telling them last night when I met them for the first time that I have seen their passion for people, their love for people, their hospitable hearts imprinted on this place in an indelible way. And as a result of that, I believe Abbotsford Vineyard is a very remarkable place for its open and warm hearts. So thank you so much, Kathy, for your work and your labor here. And Terry and Ruth Lamb, I think you're here. Are you here? <clears throat> there they are. Can you stand? Yeah. Okay. Woo! I am so excited to connect more with you, uh, Terry and Ruth, and we just hear over and over again about your shepherd leadership and the unique way that you pastored while you were here and the impact you made. So thank you for that. Look forward to hearing more. Yes, yes. Yeah, we haven't met you yet. Well, you did refuse COVID-friendly communion. That was our entire <laughs> conversation so far. I do want to say, though, that they came to Manitoba and gave us a word that was mildly corrective again, actually, in that moment, uh, but was very, very helpful. So I know you will not remember that, but I'll tell you all about it if we have a chance to talk. <laughs> Gary and Lisa Stevens, 2001 to 2019. Awesome. Gary's here. Oh, wow. I mean, so many of you... You, you remember, you were here during those years and you were impacted by that time. And uh, I mean, what a long tour of duty. I'm so proud of you, man. And he did so much. And of course, during that time, we did things like Love Abbotsford and uh, Casa de Luz is still, is it still running, Gary? <laughs> I think Casa de Luz is still running. So that's super exciting. And Kevin and Nancy Bowes, can you stand up? <laughs> So as Laura Lee was saying, and as we were blessed by this morning, Kevin was a uh, worship pastor here for 10 years. You guys were here at Abbotsford Vineyard for, I think, 20? I don't know. Is that fair to say? Or Yeah. And uh, fun fact is I know Kevin and Nancy Bowes from 1989. I know. I'm kind of, we're kind of old, but hey, went to Bible school together. And interesting, other fun fact In is over the years... We were in Winnipeg. Kevin and Nancy were here in Abbotsford. They would have these family gatherings in Ontario every other year. And so we always heard about you folks. Yes. And we were so blessed and excited about this church, never imagining the that we would be here facts. and even here today. So isn't the Lord good, yeah. right? It's just so fun. Yes, indeed. Yes. Lots to be said about that. But I heard Brian and Joyce are in the house. Is that true? Is that just a rumor? Brian and Joyce. Can they stand yeah, okay. okay. There awesome. He, is. he canceled his whole tour to be here. We're so grateful for that, Brian. That is so great. I would say, you of course, I mean, many of you will know the impact they've had on the denomination and on worship music, period. Um, but you probably don't know how warmly they welcomed us when we came to the Lower Mainland. We were not expecting that. We're so grateful for you guys and for your warm uh, blessing and welcome. Another fun fact is that when it was like we had to quarantine for 14 days, of course, Mike got COVID, and Brian and Joyce brought him a meal. I just thought that was so sweet. We hardly yeah. knew them, and there they were at our door 
bringing this poor guy and our whole family a meal. So just love these guys. So those are people you wouldn't want to not know they were here. I think that's why we did that. Uh, but there's all of you and many of you, maybe not all of you, but many of you were part of the Abbotsford Vineyard. And, you know, David earlier said it doesn't matter who came when and when and so on. But we want to just kind of get a little picture of who came and when they were here because it'd be fun. Uh, just to kind of, uh, because some of us weren't here at all, like, you know, maybe the two of us, and some other people in the room that have just joined us in the last month. Um, so it'd be really cool to just kind of see uh, if you were part of Abbotsford Vineyard Church from 1993, anywhere from 1993 to 2000, oh my goodness, no, 1993 to let's just do 1998, just the first five years. If you're part of the first five years, could you stand up? just so we can see the founding oh, wow. people. There we awesome. go. Look at you. Look at that. Amazing. Okay. So that's so cool. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, okay. I mean, it, it, some of you are just going to have to keep standing, or <laughs> you can go up and down as I do these, because we're just going to go in five-year increments all the way to the present, just to warn you. So the next one is, uh, we'll actually do 1998 again, to um, 2002. Stand up if you were around in those days at all. Sign up. There we go. A lot of the same. There we go. Some of the same and a lot of new people too. That's really cool. Okay. 03 to 07. 03 to 07. Yeah. You can stay standing. Some of you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. 03 to 07. There we go. A new crop of blood at that point. Fantastic. There's Keegan who is my building manager today. That's fantastic. How about 08 to 12 to uh, like 2008 to 2012. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Some more longevity. That's good. Awesome. It's good to see you guys. Look at those faces. Okay, and uh, 2013 to 2017. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Many more as we get into more recent history. That's good. Okay, and from 2018 to today, any time in that period, stand on up. Look at that. Okay, so cool. So cool. And the regulars are clapping you, so that's really, really nice. Hey, so um, a bunch of you are part of us today, and a bunch of you are not. Just to let you know, it's a really neat season. I think Abbotsford Vineyard has been through all kinds of seasons. We really loved it. We're really blessed to be part of the season. Uh, we have some really strong people. We often remark on the yeah. character of the people that are at Abbotsford Vineyard today. It's amazing. We're about 60 to 100 when we assemble. Um, and a lot of times people just keep on talking about how it feels more like family than ever. One of the remarks that Fran Buell came to me this morning, she said, she's talking about, about how people just kind of like rise up and do stuff. So great not to be pulling teeth here, as so many people just kind of like do stuff all over as we have really active, uh, uh, a really active congregation, and we're so blessed by you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, very thankful for the roots. You know, we, we noticed that right away, the, the, the pillars, you guys, the, the ones that are here, and we know it's the impact of all of you and what the Lord has done over the years. So we are so blessed to be part of this big family. Some of you we don't even know about yet, but just so blessed. And so if your name hasn't been mentioned, but you've sown in here, we're just thankful. Yeah. And, uh, and the Lord Even if knows. your name has been mentioned. Yep, yeah, even if your name has been. And All we're going to hear from three people now. So Gary Best is going to talk next about how AVC came to be. Um, after that, we're going to have a baptism. Daniel Smith is going to be baptized. And Mike Fornwald is also yeah. going to baptize Daniel Smith. And uh, Mike Fornwald is also going to talk about his time here at AVC. So we're going to hear from Gary now. All right. Well, I'm sure a number of you, when you heard my name announced, said, that guy's still alive? <laughs> well, I'm excited to say today that the news of my demise has been greatly exaggerated. I think we can say the same thing of the Abbotsford Vineyard. Uh, we, we all can agree on this. It's, it's, it's been quite a ride, is it not? Um, back in 1993, when... Uh, the campus, Abbotsford Vineyard campus, was launched. I, I think we were only somewhat aware that what we were doing was so groundbreaking and outside of the box. Uh, we were probably, I mean, it eventually became known as Vineyard Pacific Community. And it was at least within the first 10 multi-site churches in North America, but perhaps in the first two or three. 
Within the next 20 years, there were 8,000. Um, we didn't really, we weren't trying to start a trend because our whole focus was entirely different. I mean, multi-site churches have become the sort of go-to strategy to get more people in a building. But our whole purpose was entirely the opposite. We were trying to refresh and revitalize the sense of family and community and people journeying together that we, we had in the beginning was so challenging as the numbers got greater and greater. Um, but uh, what did Eisenhower say? The uh, no plan survives the battlefield. We had this great idea we were going to be this uh, church in a variety of locations celebrating the diversity within unity and and, and within the first few years, uh, there was a certain man, a guy some of you may be familiar with, a man named John Wimber, who was the founder of this whole thing. And he came to me at the time when we had agreed to take over leadership of the vineyard in the country, and he said, Gary, I believe God has spoken to me. Um, well, that's sort of like having an... I mean, when, that man said, I believe God has spoken to me. You're already packing your bags to respond to what he's about to say. But what he said was, I want you to leave immediately le release this thing that started as separate churches. Go plant a new church as you take over the country. Um, actually, I flew down to California to find out what he was on. Uh, <laughs> The end of the day, he was convinced that God had spoken to him, and so I trusted that, and so began a journey that none of us had expected. And the Abbotsford Vineyard was a separate church, as were all these other congregations, and I was church planting while, I mean, all hell was breaking loose across the country. <laughs> what, what, a, what an incredible ride. And in all of the, I mean, then you look at the, the years following that. Some unbelievable, exhilarating highs in terms of your experience together, weren't there, were there not? And some devastating lows. And I had the opportunity over those years sometimes of coming, weaving in and out of your story and experiencing those things with you. And I was reflecting back in the drive-in this morning, think, okay, what, what did we really learn through all of that? Well, at least we learned this, that... Um, You've proven that a church can have more lives than a cat. <laughs> yeah. And yet, when we get to times like this, I mean, 30 years is a big marker. And inevitably, it brings about reflection. We look back. I mean, it's not exactly the same as a funeral. That's sort of the, the final marker. Uh, but, you know, these, these milestones, you look back and you, you think of the, the highs and the lows, the good and the bad, the, the wins, the losses, and, um, and you try to make some sense of it all. Uh, inevitably, and as this is a natural thing, we reflect and ask the question, what's our legacy? Now, here, we have to be really, really careful. Because, you see, we can speak of the church in two dramatically different ways, and both have some politically, validity. We can, we can speak, when we speak of the church, what we can mean is the organization of the church. The scaffolding, the, 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 the structures, the buildings, the polity, the, the, the initiatives. And we can go, okay, well, that was the Abbotsford Vineyard, and in, in, indeed, that's one way of looking at it. But if we use that as, our, as the metric that we're going to use to say what is our legacy, you know, in, in all honesty, even though we'll put a happy face on it and saying, we'll say, you know, this church is going to rise from the ashes. We, we like had five new people last month. It's only a matter of time. We're going to get back to where we once were. Uh, the reality is that ship may have sailed. So if you're going to judge yourself by organizational success, you may inevitably begin to think, you know, our best days were all behind us. And what we know from any historian is as soon as you begin to say that, it's over. We're just putting in sleeps. 
But thankfully, that's not the metric that God uses, nor should it be the metric that we use or the definition that we hold to when we talk about the church. Because first of all, and most of all, the church is not an organization. Yeah, I mean, it's got some stones, but they're living ones. Isn't that what Peter said? He, he didn't say, this is who you are. You've got an eldership, and you've got a building, and you've got a denomination, and you have corporate reach. And No, he's saying, no, you are a, you're chosen people. You're a, a holy nation. You're, you're God's special possession. You're this community of, you're a living organism of people on a journey, daring to believe that they can form a bridge between heaven and earth that somehow they can in some small measure be the people of the presence of God and then together live out that presence. Oh yes, in broken ways, but in sufficient ways to see absolutely lives change and change eternally. That's the Abbotsford Vineyard that is a treasure in God's eyes. And that's what we always believed that we were daring to hope for, that we could taste and see some measure of that. You know, when these, the, the vineyard, that the roots of which are, are your roots, when we first began, just a few people gathering together in a, we used to call it the fly church, that's because you know, it was only used by us, and the heat was never turned on. And when you finally turned on the heat Sunday morning, you had like, you got to about 80% through your service before the flies started dropping from the ceiling. And then they would land in people's hair, and they'd spin on the seats. And so you knew in ministry time when the flies started to drop, you know, you needed a big-time experience of the Holy Spirit or get people out of there, right? Well, the whole, back in the beginning of that, God gave us a promise. And it was a promise that was so much part of our journey together, all of us in this room. And it was the promise contained in the words of Jesus in, in, the, in the Gospel of John. Don't be afraid, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we tasted and we saw, we experienced what it's like when what, what God wants happening comes into our broken experiences and we see a taste of heaven breaking into earth. And we experience those things. We experience them in our own lives and through our lives into the lives of others. And so when I think back of the legacy of the Abbotsford Vineyard, and it isn't the corporate group. It isn't the organizational group. I just loved watching this morning. And, and, you know, they gave a little space for communion. And the next thing you're doing is you're, you're reaching out to one another. And what we realize is the bonds that we share with one another don't matter at all. Don't depend at all on whether or not you're still going to this organization or whether your path and journey has taken you somewhere else. There was something we shared, and we experienced the presence of God, and we experienced it together, and then we tried to live it out as incompletely as we could. And we saw the, the poor fed, and the, the, the widow embraced, and the orphan reclaimed, and, and, and we saw broken lives coming together and integrating. We saw destroyed relationships restored. We saw marriages come back together and families uh, establishing a new foundation. We saw what people through the ages have dreamed that they just have a taste of. It wasn't all that we wanted. And it was covered by the reality that the church was filled with people like us. So it was broken. It was incomplete. Didn't always know how to get along with one another. And, you know, we took some bold steps of faith and then later on said, well, of all of our great moves, this has been one of them, uh, you know, and quickly retraced our steps and tried to find God again. And you're still doing it, aren't you? But God has been in this place. 
And you have always been people that loved one another deeply from your heart and wanted to let that love come through your lives and touch the real world in which you live. And that, my friends, is the legacy of the Abbotsford Vineyard. It's what we will always be known for, and it's, 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 what, God, it's what God treasures. Let me close with this. We had just begun. We had about 50 people. Uh, oh, Mike's gone. Um, um, oh, there you are. I am here. <laughs> and we're a little over 50 now. Yeah, like, you know, he said 50 to 100 people. We were somewhere in that range. And so the big man was doing a conference, and I sort of bumped into him. I'd never met him. And, and I, I just sort of said, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm the, we're the vineyard people in town. Like, we're just, we're just starting. So, and I was so apologetic because back in those days, the real vineyard church, all, they all had 1,000 people. And, and that's what legitimized you and meant, you know, God was really on your side. And, and so he asked me a few questions, and he had that kind of smile and twinkle in his eye. And then he asked me the question that 95% of all pastors are terrified someone might ask them. How many people do you have? <laughs> and I went, well, well, I, 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 and you, and you want to kind of exaggerate and bump it up a little bit, but not too much because you know the Ananias and Sapphira story, <laughs> story, and and a lot of power back in those days. So, I whatever number I said, he looked at me. And I was all apologetic. I know we can do better. I'm, we're just beginning. We've got all sorts of plans. And, you know, this church is going to be a real church. And he looked at me. And he put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, oh, enjoy it. It never gets better than this. And, you know, it never gets better than this. That people who have gone different ways, sometimes through hurtful situations, are able to come back and say, ah, whatever. It's good to see you. It's good to know we're on the same journey. It's, it's how privileged we were to share some of the experiences we shared together. You know, at the end of the day, folks, we're all just a room full of people trying to figure it out trying to figure out what it means to follow God and say yes to his yes, and try to figure out what, what relationship means. And, and, you know, as we get older, we, we discover a lot more grace, don't we? Because we realize how much we need it for ourselves. But I am so thankful that I had an opportunity to journey with you and taste and see some of the things that we've seen. And to see that the heart of it all is alive and well in the community that meets here every Sunday. It never gets better than this. And we can trust God for that because his legacy is in our hands. So thank you. Thank you to all of you for the lives you live. I'm so thankful for what has come through the obedience of a community of people who has dared to believe that God is good and that we can trust him and partner with him in the world. And the fruit of that will be, of course, measurable and should be. But I'm so filled with gratitude because of it. So well done, Abbotsford Vineyard, past, present, and future. And future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. That last word is a great segue to what we wanted to happen next. A number of people thought it was a bit weird that I would want Daniel Smith to be baptized today, including Daniel Smith. <laughs> Let me explain. But in the meantime, uh, the young adults, yes, thank you, Kylan. The young adults have sort of, uh, well, thought that it would be great if they... Uh, could support Daniel Smith, particularly as he does his testimony, give him familiar faces to look at by bringing your faces up to the front. 
I don't know if they told you. Did they tell you? They told me. Okay, so. all right. So he's expecting your faces to come <laughs> on up. So uh, that would be great if you would come on up. So mm. let me just give a brief explanation, and then I'll throw it open to Daniel. Da so Daniel's parents, Greg and Julie Smith, who are sitting right over there and happily waving, were a couple of one of the founding couples of this church, and they uh, had a lot of opportunity to stand up a few minutes ago. And Daniel was born, I like to say you were born into this church, I suppose, or yeah. in a nearby hospital yeah. or something. Uh, probably in a hospital nearby, probably. Yeah. Ask, my, ask my mom. Okay. Okay, well, you can ask Julie later exactly where. But basically born and started attending this church. Hmm. And as far as I know, you have never not done that. I have never not been kind of an attendant of this church. No, except There's a period of time where I didn't go as regular, but... Okay. Yeah. You, I've always okay. considered myself... You're going to confess to that later. I know. So. I was going to say, it, it's in here. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So he's going to get to that. But nevertheless, so he's been a part of this church for 23 years now. 23. He's not... He's almost but not quite as old as Abbotsford Vineyard mm -hmm. herself. And in a way, was born soon after her birth. So in a way, in a very remarkable way, you have this auspicious uh, opportunity to kind of represent Abbotsford Vineyard. And speaking of the future, um, he's going to live longer than, I mean, I don't want to say this pejoratively, but he's going to live longer than some of you. I'm just, I think. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, he is... It's a hard part. Hopefully you stay for another 23 or 30 yeah, years or yeah, something. Yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see where God leads. And so he's very much a part of this church, and he's going to tell his story yeah. growing up in this church. Yeah, thank you, Mike, first of all. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, first of all, I want to say that I want to thank God that I'm uh, sitting here today. It says standing my notes, but about to get baptized. Because without him, this, let alone that, wouldn't even be possible. He's been truly, truly faithful to me throughout my entire life. And he's shown me a lot of his faithfulness through you guys, the church. So thank you, Abbotsford Vineyard. I've been going to the Abbey Vine all 23 years of my life. I grew up going to Sunday school here and seeing my parents' faith at home. My mom tells me that I was four years old when I prayed for Jesus to enter my heart. Actually, my earliest memory, thinking back on my own, is involving God was me swinging on the old swing set we had in the backyard and singing to him and praying for it to rain. And uh, I just kind of see that oh, today it was, it was raining. So uh, I liked rain back then, and I still do, and uh, praise God. And uh, yeah, eventually, uh, through my time in Sunday school, I graduated from there and moved on to running around the building during the sermon, and also grabbing as many two white brownies as I could during table Sundays. Sword fighting with the flags was also a favorite pastime of mine. And then when I entered middle school, I started attending the youth group. And it was here where I took my parents' faith and made it my own. These years were incredibly formative in my walk with God and in my walk in life in general. I had amazing mentorship from men, some men of God who took the time to pour into us crazy middle school to high school age boys, one of which is Mr. Mike Fornwald, which, uh, oh, there he is, ready. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, just for which I'm incredibly grateful to have been known by and to know. And God has been so faithful. He's been with me even when I haven't noticed him. He's protected me so many times when I could have walked off the deep end. I give glory to God when I say that I have never turned my back on God and said that I don't want anything to do with him. I've had my fair share of doubts and struggles and where are you gods, but I have never considered myself not his. Looking back, God's faithfulness has been so evident in my life, especially in those youth years where it's so easy to give in to what the world is saying as you try to figure yourself out in all that teenage awkwardness. Youth was foundational in my life. It was a foundation that was built on the foundation of the church community and my home life. And those foundations were built on the foundation that Jesus laid when he gave up his life for our sake. And then he invited us into his life. And that foundation is one that will never be shaken. And that is stronger than anything this entire world has to offer. And even after high school and through the literally and spiritually dark days working night shifts where I stopped regularly attending church and was more focused on the need of others around me to know Jesus than my own, no my own need to know him when I was trying to pour out of a dry place, out of my own strength and ability, that foundation still held true. God brought amazing people into my life again as I stepped into attending the young adults group here and, amazing, and started also attending the church regularly as well. And he continued to work in my heart. I found myself becoming more and more hungry for him 
and actually being dissatisfied with where I was at in my relationship with him. I felt like I was a rubber band kind of being stretched, and I had this intensifying desire to get to know God deeper and surrender more of my life to him. Eventually, through God's leading and some conviction, that rubber band got released in the form of me heading off to Norway for a YWAM discipleship training school. It was an adventure that I could not have seen coming. <laughs> and uh, during my time there, God taught me so much about his word, his church working all over the world, the intimacy he desires to have with us, worship him out of a place of thankfulness and all the time, and so, so much more. And that period of growth and seeking depth with God didn't end when I got back home. Alongside the Abbotsford Vineyard here and the Young Adults Group, I've been walking with God and getting to know him in ways that I could never have without this community. Whether it's through mentorship, accountability groups, digging into God's word together and living it out together, or just having fun. And that's why I'm up here right now, about to do what I'm about to do because of what Jesus already did 2,000 years ago. He invites us into a new life and wants to live it alongside us and for us to live it alongside each other. So let this baptism be of a sign of what he accomplished all those years ago, not only for me and my life, but for the world and everyone in it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I, I love thinking of what Jesus did for us like a wedding. They actually married his bride on the cross. And that ever since then, whenever someone would get, ba would get baptized, like one of us, one of the wedding bells would be ringing, and each baptism kept going down the back up. We got ding. And this is now my time to actually get to join in that endless chorus that has been going for 2,000 years. And actually, yeah, that's just an amazing thought for me. Yeah. So, and we just get to let everyone know when this bell rings, it's just an announcement to the world what happened and what is still happening. So, God is really, really good. And thank you for listening for me, and thank you for being with me. Uh, these years, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. There you go. I'll hold, I'll hold this for you. Yes, take your shoes off. It never ends. in a minute. So um, just before we do this, I want to share something. And so in 2018, you graduated. As part of our student ministry, at the end of the school year, um, whoever was part of the student ministry, grade 6 to 12, we took that day or whatever evening to listen to Jesus and pray over students. That was just part of it. Sometimes it was one youth night, sometimes two, sometimes three. And as grade six, seven, eight, nine, they all sat through it year after year after year after year until they were in grade 12. And you sat through it year after year until grade 12. I know exactly what was prayed over him in 2018 because I keep track of it. And so I want to share a few of those things. And then I actually spoke to some of your friends yesterday. And I said, describe Daniel to me. And it's amazing how those things match. And how they grow and they mature in your life. And as I sat here and listened to you um, just share, and I go, that was not the eloquence of your life five years ago. But Jesus has done a work that has been able to, to bring forth the good fruit that was in there. And so this is what, these were some of the things that were shared in 2018. Um, there was a leader who called you her great assistant. <laughs> Yes, he says yes. And I would say you are still assisting many people, but it appears that you've stepped into leadership in different ways. I say well done in following Jesus. But some of these words were great character, fierce and loyal, trustworthy and valiant. You're a masterpiece. You're unique, um, strong and fierce in conviction in pursuing Jesus. And then as I began to speak to some of your friends yesterday, I just said, describe Daniel to me. And they're like, what? Just tell me about him. And they began to use similar words. He's enduring. He's integral. He's faithful. He's committed. And so I would say to you as a church, thank you for walking with him. Thank you for continuing to pour into him to see the work of God come forward. I would also say as a church, thank you for releasing us as students to listen to Jesus and to speak forth the word of God and to risk on that. And so it is a privilege, it really is. I sat here listening and go, what a joy it is to see people follow Jesus. It stirs my heart. 
still does. So it's a privilege to baptize you. One end or the other, not the middle. So. <laughs> you tried that once. Yeah. You tried it once. So, Daniel, do you love Jesus? I do. Excellent. And do you want to follow him for the rest of your life? I do. Amen. Amen. And I would say to you, family here, are you willing to walk with Daniel on this journey? Yes. Yes. Amen. So upon your confession of faith in Jesus and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my joy, it's our joy to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I would say, um, if, if you just listen and watch that, and if God was speaking to you and you go, hey, I have an encouraging word, I'd love to pray over him, please make sure you do that after. Young adults, gather around him, lay hands on him, bless him in this journey. Okay, do it now then. So, yeah. Is there anyone else who would like to be baptized? You never know, I know. So, I guess pray over him now. So, sweet. Um, I'm just going to speak. So, um, just really quickly, as you heard, my name's Mike, and uh, my wife, Jocelyn, isn't able to be here today, but she does say congratulations to 30 years. Um, we are currently living in Penticton, and um, I have a couple hats I'm wearing. I just want to share very briefly, just as part of this community and as a staff member, and then I'm part of the regional team as well, and so we just want to speak on behalf of that um, to the church as well. And so in, um, I have an interesting relationship, so I was first working at the vineyard in 2005, um, and then there were some challenges going through a season like that, which I can leave, and if you need a conversation about that, you can talk to Mike Laboon later. So, um, good luck. So, um, but... In July or August of 2010, I received a text message, um, and my wife and I, we were going through a fairly challenging time in, in life and in ministry, and I received a text message from Gary Stevens, um, and he said, hey, I'd like to meet with you for coffee, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not meeting with anyone right now to talk about what I'm going through, and he goes, oh, I don't want to talk about that, I want to offer you, I want to talk to you about a job, and I was like, What? And so instantly, my wife and I, we were actually discussing this last night as we were um, driving together. Um, the question, the biggest question that struck us, question and statement was, what kind of healing has come to this house that you would actually reach out to me again to say, hey, we want to work together? And, and um, it, we were, we were totally struck going, what kind of work of God has happened to the hearts of this community that they would go, hey, we want to keep walking with you because I had, I had stepped away and, come, and, and coming back. And um, for that, I, I truly do. I honor your leadership. It's Gary and Lisa and Ron and Bev and Ron and Marilyn and Doug and Susie and Bruce and Sylvia. And I say thank you so much for letting Jesus work in your heart and for leading the church in the way of healing and, and being able to follow Jesus. I do. I truly honor you for that. I say thank you for being examples and for leading in a very difficult time. Radically changed my life. It really did. Now, from there, um, I don't think, and this is the, the interesting thing. I'm just a little personal story. We ended up sitting at the back of your church not working for the church for four weeks and just weeping as God began to heal our heart. And there's a piece of the Spirit of God that is in this house to see healing come to people. It's just part of it. And we got to experience it and then I got to be part of it. And, and I want to say to 
Gary and to the leadership team throughout the ages, I say thank you so much for not merely listening to the word, but you actually do it. You did it. And I say, on, I say thank you and I honor you for years consistently, not just hearing the word, but for consistently doing it. It has made a radical difference in my life. And then I was given the privilege of walking with a number of students and young adults. And I think it made a big difference in their lives as well. And so I say thank you to the leadership team for following Jesus, for not relenting and for pursuing healing, not only for yourself, but for the local church. You've done a, a, you did a good job in the midst of a hard situation. Well done, well done, well done. And I am excited to hear more of these stories. Because of the history and the foundation that's in this house, you're giving a good place for students and for young adults to run. So I say thank you to, so for following Jesus. So I was told I had two minutes, and I'm going to switch hats. And so um, from the BC regional team, um, which I've been part of for... Uh, a little while, our regional team, as you heard, is Kate Bentham is here, and then Dave and Debbie Toombs um, out of Kamloops are on the team, and they're, they're in a bit of transition with the team, but it's, it's us four mainly, um, and we say congratulations to the church for 30 years, for following Jesus, for holding true to who you are, for loving Jesus, and for loving others, and that is, that's the mission. As I looked at, again at the website, I was looking through, and I was looking at my own life, you guys have loved Jesus and you've loved others. And it hasn't always looked the same over the last 30 years, but you've held to the DNA of who you are. And we want to say thank you for doing that. I also say from the region, I say thank you so much because the Abbotsford Vineyard, if you didn't know this, um, they were huge support and backers of the church plant that took place in Vancouver, the Vancouver church plant with Insu and Angela and Brent and Amy, they were running out of our office. We took on, I say we, the Abbotsford Vineyard, you guys, took on that church plant, if you didn't know that. As a region, we say thank you for that. I also say for all the support um, that you guys have given to the region through BC gatherings, through hosting things, through the pastor's retreat, um, you guys have been extremely generous. Whether you knew that was happening or not, that was happening. And that was the leadership who said, no, we actually want to lean into the region. Um, for the way you supported teenagers in this province, um, I had the privilege of overseeing a, a youth conference called Converge. If you didn't know that, Gary said, yeah, why don't you spend hours and 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 hours of your year, of your time investing in other churches so that we can grow together. So I say thank you for the vision that he had and that the regional team had to go, hey, let's do this together. And as a church, you guys backed us. Whether you knew it or not, that was happening. Um, the values that you hold as a church is about Jesus, it's about worship, it's about generosity, it's about the Bible, and that you live Jesus outside these walls. It's made a difference, it's making a difference. Don't relent. Don't relent. And I love that I got to play my part. And I love that we all get to play our part in following Jesus in this house. It is, um, it's really shaped my life in a, in a huge way. And I say thank you for it. Um, what you guys have done has impacted our region um, much more than I think anyone knows. Much more than is known. And so I say thank you um, for the way you've played your part. And I just want to close in prayer a bit for my own life and... Um, and from the region, and just looking at Ephesians 1, 15 to 18, it says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you would know him better. And I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order to know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glory's inheritance in his holy people. And so, God, we ask that you would reveal yourself to us. You, we ask that you would reveal yourself to the Abbotsford Vineyard, again, for the next season of life. We ask for the opening of eyes. We ask for the re revelation of hope to come to this community in a way they've never known so that they can reach beyond these walls again in the way and in the time and in the season that you're asking them to do. And so we bless you, Abbotsford Vineyard. 
Say thank you for playing your part in this family, in this story. Lord, and so we just say come and reveal yourself to us again in this day and in this season for this time. In your name, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Okay, we are almost ready now to join and be together. We're going to give directions on the light lunch and festivities. That's going to be happening that way. We'll tell you in just a minute. So a couple things that we would love and want to invite you to. You're always welcome if you're local. If you're not local, you're always welcome here at 1030. Uh, something, a highlight for us that's coming up this 17th of December is how to survive your church Christmas pageant. Very informative. Yes. And we've got an interesting intergenerational Christmas pageant. We have a seven-year-old and somebody in their 70s that we're very thankful for. So this is going to be exciting. Come to that Christmas Eve morning. We're also going to be here at 1030. We'd love to have you. Uh, Mike? Yeah. So now's the time when you guys get to talk to each other and we don't don't run off yet. Wait for instructions, and then I'm going to release you uh, right after Kevin's benediction. Um, uh, so this is the deal, okay? So most of you came in through the doors that are on your right. Not all of you, but most of you did. I would like, I would like all of you, if you're willing, you know, I, 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 everything's optional to Vineyard, but if you're willing to exit the doors on your far left, and there are arrows trying to lead you to the gym. That's very important that you not pass the caution tape or get distracted. There's a lot of nice toys. Just keep going all the way to the gym. And there's food there for you that you're allowed to touch, unlike the toys. Um, uh, one of the things I want to point out is that, you know, we've got a lot of vineyard people here, former vineyard people, present vineyard people. You know... Like you are, as, as uh, Gary was saying in a way, you know how to bless each other. This is an opportunity that you may not get for a while to see people, to talk to people. Ask the Lord what to say because his words are even better than the ones you want to say. And, and go up and talk to people and bless them. Uh, I even give you permission to talk to strangers. If you are, if you do know someone, if you know nobody here and you'd be scared of that, it is probably a good time for you to leave. Because you may, be, <laughs> you may have people come talk to you. So we can assume that anybody who stays is okay with you talking to them. So go up and talk to people. Of course, you're going to see people you haven't seen for a while and bless them. One of the things you might want to be doing, here's a little hot tip is be thinking as you walk towards that person, what of God you saw in them? What did you see of them of God? That would be an amazing conversation to have today. Of course, we know how to pray for people and give people words. You can feel free to do that if you'd like as well. Jody has a little game to play, kind of. Yeah, really when, once you get to the gym, Tom and Fran have made this beautiful memory board, a blessing board. So we would love four things from you on this board. Write down your name, your years at Abbotsford Vineyard. Did you meet your spouse here? And a favorite memory. So we would love those things. Your name, your years. Did you meet your spouse here? And a favorite memory. That's going to be on the board in the gym. So before you leave, try to get that up there. We would just be so blessed. We're going to keep that. And go ahead. Okay, just really quick. If you're from the table, can you wave? We just want to say hi to you. Thanks, tablers. Um, if we have, if you're from Langley Vineyard, can you wave? Do we just want to say hi to you? We got, okay, yes. Thank you, Langley. If you're from Alder Grove, can you wave? Just want to say hi to you. Look at the, oh, there you guys. Awesome, over there. Um, if you're from Chilliwack Vineyard, can you wave? Do we have, oh, the, uh, yes, uh, over there. Uh, Chilliwack Vineyard. Am I missing anybody from around, around these parts? Okay, all right. Kevin is going to close in uh, a benediction. Grace for the snacks that we're going to have. Yeah, why don't we stand together? Are there words for this or no? If there's not, that's fine. It's called, May the Peace of Christ Go With You. It's a prayer written by the Northumbrian Celtic community. I added a melody to it years ago. Some of you might know it. We'll do it a couple times, so feel free to join in. May the peace of Christ go with you.